Welcome back to Design TV. The Open just ended. We're about to start a new phase of training. So I wanted to explain this in a little bit more detail about some of the changes we're making. We're also putting this video free on YouTube for the people that aren't in the design <clears throat> to get a little bit more of an understanding of how we're gonna lay training out so that if you got exposed in the open or if you want a new group of people to train with that you understand how we're gonna approach training in this off season. <coughs> yeah, I had one of those. We did cool call. <coughs> Don't put that in slow motion, please. So the major change to this training phase is that we now have three training paths. The first is CrossFit. That's just a well-balanced GPP program that's geared towards preparing you for qualifier style workouts. Then we have a strength path, which is for people that got exposed in the open that aren't strong enough with a barbell or aren't strong enough to do complex gymnastics stuff that's just basically straight strength work. And then we have an energy system path which is purely cyclical, things like running, assault bike, and rowing that is designed to help you improve your engine. So let's dive into today's training, Monday, November 18th, CrossFit Path. A, squat snatch. One triple, 70 to 75% of your one rep max. One double at 75 to 80% of your one rep max. Four singles at 80 to 85% of your one rep max resting 90 seconds between. So this is gonna be the starting point for building training progressions from now through the new year to help you improve overall technical ability and overall loading capacity for 1RMs in the snatch. This is a relatively condensed time window relative to traditional strength-based programs, which is partially because this is part of the CrossFit-based training path. So you need to get better at lifting on more condensed time windows. So you'll notice that as we go through this phase, those are gonna be a little bit shorter than maybe you're accustomed to if you're on a pure strength-based training program, which will be reflected in the strength path when we get to that. B, auto-regulated back squats. So AMRAP and then in parentheses minus two, that means you're gonna go until you feel like you're two reps away from failing. So generally when you're squatting or when you're doing an exercise and you start to go through an through a movement, your speed starts to slow and you can tell like, okay, if I do another one of these, I might fail. Or if I do another one of two of these, I might fail. So this is an opportunity for you to get a better self-awareness and understanding of where your actual limits are. And in order to do a set like this appropriately and not have it turn into a breathing set where you have the bar on your back for four minutes and you're standing there and taking 10 breaths, there's a fixed tempo on this. So it's two zero X two or two zero X zero means it's two full seconds down, no pause in the bottom, explode all the way up to the top of your squat and then instantly down into the next squat. So you take 80% of your one rep max, you go AMRAP minus two with a 15 rep cap. So there are some people that don't have uh, or have a, an, a very, very good ability to operate at high percentages of their one rep max. Generally, they're really good CrossFit athletes. If you're one of those people, then 15 reps is the most that I want you to do in this set. If you're not one of those people, this could be anywhere from two to 10 reps if, or two to 15 reps since that's the cap based on what your capacity is in that specific movement at that specific tempo. So 80% of your one rep max, AMRAP minus two, and it's just one set of that in the CrossFit path. It's more in the strength path, but we'll get to that when we get there. Then you move on from that strength work and you're gonna do three sets of progressive burpees. So it's 30 bar facing burpees for time and you're gonna rest as needed between these sets. Now, progressive pace means that each subsequent set should get faster than the previous one. So you should start at something like 80% effort, then 90% effort in your second set, and then 100% effort in your last set. And as a challenge, I want you to use a different technical strategy to execute your burpee in each one of those sets. So in the first one, you might hop up to your feet, take a step to the bar, another step to the bar, jump over, turn around and drop into the burpee. And then maybe on your second set, you're gonna step up with one foot all the way up to the bar, then step the other foot up, jump and rotate in the air, land on the other side. And then in the last set, you're gonna hop up, hop down, hop up, jump over and rotate in the air. By changing your technique for each one of these, you should be able to go faster and faster in each one. So make sure that as you're doing this, you're using one, a different strategy each time, and two, increasing the speed with which you complete those 30 burpees each time. That 10 minute recovery, 
can be for people that are taking you know three minutes to do the set and are only able to do 10 burpees a minute. That might be a six minute rest for somebody that can do the 30 burpees in less than a minute or less than 90 seconds for all the sets. So there's a variable rest time. Make sure that you use the amount of rest that you think is needed to be able to increase your speed as you're going from set to set. Then after you do those three sets, a salt bike 20 cals at your maximum maximum recoverable pace. So you wanna figure out as you're getting better at this sport, when you jump onto a machine, if you're in a workout that's something like 20.5 where you had the rowing in there and some people had to get on the rower and go as fast as they could while still recovering to get back out and do muscle ups. So I want that same type of concept to happen. Get on the assault bike, do 20 cals at the fastest pace that you can without really elevating your heart rate, blowing up your legs, blowing up your respiration, and getting yourself all messed up metabolically. Then once you're done with that, 60 seconds accumulated freestanding handstand hold. For people that can't do a freestanding handstand hold, do it on the wall, either wall facing or back to the wall or a pike position with your feet on the box. After three sets of that with no rest between where you're just going back and forth between those two movements, there's two shoulder accessory movements, elbow and knee external rotations, 15 to 20 reps times two per side, then single arm hang on the pull-up bar, 30 seconds per side, rest one minute back and forth between those two movements. That's your training for the day if you're following the CrossFit path. All right, so the strength path. You'll notice in the strength path that the strength work that's in the CrossFit path is some sort of adjusted version of, the, of a couple movements from the strength path. So if you're an advanced athlete and you're doing all of this training as three separate days, you'll cut the strength por portion out of the CrossFit path and just do everything under the first two components of today's training. So you won't do the snatches and you won't do the back squats as the strength path, you'll just go from the burpees down and then in the strength, you'll actually do a little bit more prescribed volume of those movements than was in the cross, CrossFit path. So for the squat snatch, instead of one triple, it's two triples, it's two doubles, and it's four singles, and you're still gonna keep that 90 second rest time. For the auto-regulated back squats, it's not just one set of those, but you're gonna rest two minutes, or you're gonna rest four minutes, and you're gonna repeat that a second time. And then there's four movements in a quad set, C1 is clean grip RDLs. You're gonna do six to eight reps of that. Rest two minutes, then move to rear foot elevated dumbbell split squats, eight to 10 reps times two, rest two minutes. Then C3 is weighted hip extensions on the GHD, 20 reps times two. So I'd hold a plate on your chest or you can hold a dumbbell in a goblet hold position in front of you, or you can hold a barbell down in front of you, but if you do that, you're probably gonna limit the range of motion a little bit, so I'd recommend, as my top choice, just putting a plate on your chest. And then C4 is pistol squats, 20 alternating reps times two. That movement came out in 20.5, so it's obviously some, or sorry, in 20.4, so that's something that we obviously need to work on as a collective group. And if you're struggling with that, post in the comments and we'll give you some drills and skills and over time we're gonna build something to help you improve your overall pistols. But for now, we're just gonna build some volume and strength in the strength path. That rounds out your day if you are doing the strength path. And then finally, for the energy system group, it's all rowing today. 10 minute easy row, continuous as your warm up. Then you're gonna do two sets of 50 cals at progressive intensity. So 10 cals, 10 cals, 10 cals, 10 cals, 10 cals. It's 70, 80, 90, 100% effort. So I want you to get progressive with your cal per hour pace as you're going and start to get an understanding of what your ability level is like for going through 10 cals in a fatigue-based state and know at what paces you are operating at what percentages of effort. So that way in the future, when we get into next year's open, for example, if there's a workout and you gotta get on and you gotta kinda go at 80 or 90% effort because you're gonna do this big block of rowing and then get off and do a bunch of other stuff, you know what the fastest pace that you can maintain is while you're on the rower getting the work done but not blowing yourself up. You're gonna do that 50 cows, however long that whole block takes you. So let's take, say it takes you two minutes, you're gonna rest two minutes and you're gonna repeat that again. Then you're gonna do the same type of thing for a 2K row. 
and you're gonna notice that your 500 meter pace and your cows per hour paces are gonna be way different. The cows don't accumulate in the same way as meters accumulate, so I want you to get an improved awareness and understanding of how you're gonna be able to pace yourself if meters comes out as well on the rower. So it's 1K at 70%, then 500 at 80%, then 250 at 90%, and then a 250 sprint finish. So that's a 2K straight through. It's only one of those. It's not two like it is with the cows. Then you move on and you do 20 second row sprint at 100% effort, rest three minutes, you repeat that twice, and then round out your day with a 10 minute easy cool down. So that's today's training. For those of you who are watching this free on YouTube, this should give you an understanding of how we're gonna tackle the year and tackle the off season. Essentially make sure that we have specific work for developing the engine, specific work for developing strength, a path for people that don't have the time to do multiple sessions that coordinates the Metcon conditioning and strength into a single, uh, into a single training path and we'll break movements down a little bit more in the off season. Instead of putting them into straight Metcons, you're gonna see a little bit more intervals, a little bit more skill work, and a little bit more work that's focused on helping you build pacing awareness and an understanding of how your system operates under fatigue so that by next year, you're more prepared and are able to improve upon your score. Have a great training day. For those of you in the design, I'll see you tomorrow.